Databases allow us to structure and store our data in an organized manner. The addition of pictures to our database can make it more informative and visually appealing. Whether you are organizing employee information, tracking inventory, or keeping personal records, our database with pictures is the solution that you need. Hi there, welcome to Excel Demi, where you can learn to use Excel and solve Excel VBA related problems. I am Ishrak Kader and in today's video, we'll be discussing how to create a database in Excel with pictures. So, let's get started. In this video, I'll show you a step-by-step -step guide to making a simple database with pictures using Excel. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. In step one, we'll prepare the column headers where we will eventually store all the employee details. Here, I have already entered the seven column headers, which are employee number, name, address, followed by phone number, designation, date of birth, and lastly, the photo column. Next, I'll choose the column headers from A1 to G1 cell. In the alignment section, I'll click this button to center align all the column headers. In the font section, I'll increase the font size to 12. I'll make the text bold. For the fill color, I'll click the drop down. Here, you can choose any color according to your preference. In my case, I'll choose a medium shade of orange. We can either add employee information directly into the worksheet or we can construct a user form. In this demonstration, we'll construct an interactive user form to enter the employee information. In the second step, I'll show you a quick and easy way to create a VBA user form. In case you are wondering what is a user form, a user form is a pop-up window that allows us to make a custom graphical interface. Users can input data in the user form and, with the help of VBA codes, bring the data back into the worksheet. Now, I'll enable the Developer tab. If it's already visible, then you can skip this step. I'll right-click on any of the tabs in the ribbon, then go to Customize the ribbon. This opens the Excel Options dialog box. Here, I'll check the Developer option and click OK. Now, the Developer tab is visible. Go to the Developer tab and click Visual Basic. You can also use the Alt plus F11 shortcut keys. This opens the Visual Basic Editor. Next, I'll click the Insert tab and select User Form. This is our main window of the User Form. We can resize our User Form by dragging these arrow handles. The toolbox contains various controls which we can insert into our User Form, while the Properties table at the left allows us to customize and edit various controls in our user form. Following this, we'll add various controls and editing into our user form. First of all, I'll change the user form 1 caption to database entry form. We can see that our caption has been changed. Next, I'll choose the frame option and insert a frame into our user form. The frame one will contain various labels, buttons, and fields that will be present in our user form. So first, let me select the user form and enlarge the window. Then I'll select the frame. Similarly, I'll resize the window. After that, I'll go to the properties table and change the caption to blank. Next, I'll click on label and insert a label for the user form title. I'll change the caption of label 1 to database entry form. Press enter. Next, I can change the font. I'll click the font button. This brings up the font dialog box. Here, I'll choose Times New Roman. I'll change the font style to bold and increase the size to 18. Click OK. If I resize the window, we can see that the title for our user form has appeared. Similarly, I'll select the label again. I'll insert a label for employee number. I'll change the caption from label2 to emp.no.colon. Again, I'll change the font size. 
This time I'll select the font as Tahoma, change the font style to bold and increase the size to 12. Click OK. Next I'll insert a text box. So I'll click the text box option and insert a text box for the employee number. I'll select the employee number label, press Ctrl C to copy it, press Ctrl V to make copies of the employee number label. Then I'll remove the labels in place. As shown previously, I'll select each label and change their caption. In the same way, I'll select the text box one, press Ctrl C, then Ctrl V to make copies. Afterward, I'll select the employee number label again and make one last copy of it. I'll drag it into position, making sure that they are aligned properly. Then I'll change the caption to DOB. I'll select a text box, make another copy of it and place it beside DOB. Then I'll select the other text boxes and enlarge it. Afterward, I'll select label and insert a label just over DOB to show the date format. For the caption, I'll type parenthesis dd hyphen mm mm hyphen yyyy. Close the parenthesis and drag the label in position. That's it. Our user form is starting to take shape. Now we'll add the image control from the toolbox into our user form. This means that we have to expand our user form window. So first I'll drag the toolbox to the side, then I'll select the window and expand it. We can insert our image controls on the right side. To do this, I'll select the frame option and draw out a frame. Instead of frame 2, I'll remove the caption from the properties table, press delete to remove the caption. Then, I'll select the image controls and insert an image placeholder. Just below our image control, I'll add two command buttons, one to add image while the other for deleting the previous or existing image. So I'll select the command button option and create a button. In the properties field, I'll change its caption to add image. Next, I'll go to the font section, click the three dots. In the font dialog box, I'll stick with the default font of Tahoma. For the font style, I'll choose bold and increase the size to 12. Click OK. Now we can adjust our button slightly. Then I'll press Ctrl C to make a copy of the button and Ctrl V to paste it. I'll drag the button in position. I'll change this button's caption to delete. Lastly, I'll insert another frame where I'll place two more buttons, one to save the database entry and the second to close the user form. So in the toolbox, I'll select frame and insert the frame just below. Again, I'll remove the caption frame three, press delete. I'll select the add image button, press Ctrl C to copy it, then Ctrl V to paste the button. Then I'll drag it in position. Again, I'll press Ctrl V to make another copy and drag the button in position. Now let me adjust the frame. Once the adjustments have been done, I'll select the button and change its caption to save. Similarly, I'll select the second button and change its caption to close. One last edit we can perform in our user form. We can select the entire form in the properties table, go to the back color, click on the drop down, select palette. Here you can choose any color according to your preference. In my case, I'll select a light shade of orange. This adds a visually appealing backdrop to our user form. In step three, we'll add VBA codes so that when we click a button or enter a data in a text box, it performs the corresponding action. If we rename the text boxes and the command buttons, we can directly call them in our VBA codes. To rename a text box, 
select the text box first, then in the properties table, go to the name field, select text box 1 text and type in your desired name. In my case, I'll type txt empno and this is how we will rename all of our text box and command buttons. Let me speed up the video as I rename all the text boxes and command buttons. So we've renamed all our text box and command buttons. Next, we'll add VBA codes inside them. First, I'll add VBA code to the add image button so that when we click on the button, a window will appear asking us to select a picture of the employee. I'll right click on the add image button and go to view code. Here, I'll select the existing code and press delete. I'll insert my VBA code inside the window. Let me briefly explain how this VBA macro works. This is a worksheet event that runs whenever the add image button is clicked. This opens the file dialog box and displays certain types of image files. If a valid image file is selected, it will be loaded inside the user form. Otherwise, the program will close down. Next, I'll close the VBA code window and select the delete button. In a similar way, I'll right click and go to view code. Here, I'll select the existing code and paste in my code. The VBA code inside the delete button is also a worksheet event. However, unlike the add image button, it removes the loaded image from the user form whenever the button is pressed. Next, we'll have to assign VBA codes inside the save and close buttons. Let's start with the save button. You can double click to enter the VBA code window. So I'll double click on the save button. I'll select the existing code and paste in my new code. Let me briefly go through how this code works. Here the last row function determines the last used row in the worksheet. While the user form activate subroutine assigns the database worksheet to the database variable. Next, the text values from different text boxes are stored in the corresponding cells in the database worksheet. Following this, the program checks for any valid images. If there are none, then no task is performed. However, if an image is selected, then the code adjusts the height and width of the image in order to make sure that it fits perfectly. One thing to remember, in order to execute this macro properly, you have to rename your worksheet accordingly. For instance, I renamed my worksheet to Sheet 1. Lastly, I'll add VBA code for the Close button. I'll close the VBA window first, then select the Close button, double-click the button. I'll select and replace the existing code. Here, the Unload Me command closes the user form. And that's it. We've added all the VBA codes for our command buttons. In the fourth step, we'll add a search system to enhance the functionality of our database. To do this, I'll go to the worksheet. I'll go to Sheet 2. Here you can see that I have already created a format for employee search system. I want to enter the employee number in the F5 cell and get all the relevant employee information on the left. Next, I'll jump to the Developer tab. Click on Visual Basic. You can also use the Alt plus F11 shortcut keys. This opens the Visual Basic Editor. Click on Insert and select Module. We can see that we've inserted Module 1. Here, inside the Module window, I'll paste my VBA code. You can copy this code from the article linked in the description box below. Let me briefly explain how this VBA program works. Here we are essentially extending the range of the last used row in the database worksheet. Next, the program loops through all the worksheets and deletes any existing pictures. After that, it uses the VLOOKUP function to retrieve all the employee information from the database. Lastly, the program adjusts the height, width, and alignment of the picture. 
If the employee number entered is invalid, then the program displays an error message that the data could not be found. As a note, in order to properly run this macro, your worksheets have to be named appropriately. In my case, I named my worksheet as Sheet 2. Following this, I'll head back to the spreadsheet. Here, just below the employee number, I'll insert a shape and assign the macro to this shape. So I'll go to the Insert tab, click the Illustration drop-down, and select Shapes. Here, I'll choose a rounded rectangular shape. I'll draw the shape just below employee number. Now, you can format the fill color of the shape according to your preference. In my case, I'll click the Shape Fill and select a light shade of gray. I'll right-click on the shape and click Edit Text. I'll type out Get Employee Details. Next, I'll select the text, increase its font size to 12, make it bold, and change the font color to black. Then I'll adjust the shape so the text fits in one line. After that, I'll again right-click on the shape, choose Assign Macro option. This opens the Assign Macro dialog box. Here, I'll select Employee Picture Macro and click on OK. And that's it. We've assigned our macro to this shape. In step 5, we'll run the user form to enter employee data into our database. I'll jump to the Developer tab, go to Visual Basic. In the Visual Basic editor, select the user form and change its name to database underscore entry underscore form. Now, I'll click on the Run button. You can also press the F5 key to execute the user form. This launches our user form. Now we can enter various employee information and add image, then click the Save button to load the data into our database. I'll start with employee number 101. Type in his name, Charles Johnson, address 2 slash B, Free Street, London, telephone, his designation, then his date of birth. Next, I'll click the Add Image button. This opens the File Explorer. Here, I'll choose the Employee 101 picture and click Open. We can see that the image has been loaded into our user form. Now, I'll click the Save button. If we move our user form aside, we can see that our data has been loaded successfully into our database, which is in Sheet 1. In a similar way, I'll fill up all the other employee details. So, I'll speed up the video. Once we've entered the data in our worksheet by the help of user form, I'll go to Sheet 2. Here in the F5 cell, I can type in any employee number, in my case, I'll type in employee number 104, press enter, then I'll click on the Get Employee Details button, and we can see that our employee search system is working perfectly, and we've obtained the employee details, including the picture. In this demonstration, I have shown a step-by-step -step guide on how to create a database in Excel with pictures. Hopefully, you can use this knowledge to create your own database. Don't forget to download the practice workbook from the video description. Try it out for yourself. It's a great way to improve your Excel skills. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you have any queries, suggestions, or feedback, leave a comment down below. For more information, you can also visit exceldemy.com. Also, to see more helpful content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hope to see you next time. Bye!